Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 6 which is on relief displacement in aerial photographs. Today's lecture you will learn how this relief displacement is caused in aerial photographs, what are the effects and how to remove this relief displacement. So, let us begin this lecture. Because the ground surface is undulating and different points are situated at different elevations. So, every point on the photograph when we take from a certain height, it is displaced from its original position. Either it is due to the high topography or due to the depression. So, this displacement of the object is due to the height and it is present on the aerial photograph what it does, it causes the horizontal displacement of the true position of the object. It could be a tower, it could be a house, it could be any other structure. So, due to the height of that, we find its image is displayed from its true planimetric position. This direction of the displacement what we call as the relief displacement is radial from the principal point. We know how to locate the principal point on the photograph. So, radially if we measure the distance we can calculate how much is that relief displacement present in the photograph. So, we are going to learn that how to compute. Aerial images have lots of distortion when we take from the aerial camera. It could be due to terrain which we are discussing today. It could be the tilt if the camera axis is not vertical. It could be a film deformation when we were using film actually this is just taking place. Uh, camera lens due to the property of the optics then atmosphere which is present between the object and the camera and other camera errors. So, many of the errors are minor but tilt is major, but suppose we take care of the tilt while taking the photographs, then terrain is the major source of distortion or error which is present in the photograph. So, if we look at the photograph and see the geometric distortion in the photograph, the primary cause of that is the relief of the terrain. Uh, higher the relief, more will be the distortion present in the photograph. So, relief displacement is also more it is related to height, it is related to focal length, it is related to the type of features which are present in the photograph, height of those. So, uh, if the focal length of the camera lens is increased, the relief displacement becomes more on the photograph and it is vice versa also. We will see that if the object is taller, taller the object greater is the relief displacement in the photograph. So, we have shown in the image here three objects 1, 2 and 3 objects with different heights and object at T which is a telephone line and object at V which is a flag here they are giving us bottom as well as the top of the object. So, we can see that the taller object is giving us greater displacement. If we go at the center point, the relief displacement is 0. So, at center point also there is a tower here and we can see at O point which is a principal point of the photograph, you do not see the bottom at the top. So, relief displacement here is 0. This is one of the main reasons why aerial photograph cannot be used straight away as we use topographical maps to carry out the measurements from these. So, we have to understand this relief displacement and only then we should use those aerial photographs very carefully. This diagram shows there are two objects on the ground, object A and object B on the ground and the 
photograph is taken from exposure station here camera lens when we are taking these two objects they have the same height here but if we measure the relief displacement the image of the top and bottom distance object a is giving me smaller relief displacement as compared to object b so what does it mean it means that two objects of the same height will not have the same relief displacement it depends on their location where they are located they are located away from the principal point or closer to the principal point closer to the principal point will give me lesser relief displacement away will give me more if we look at this another diagram where the ground is shown and the ground is undulating so there is one point on the ground which is situated at the higher elevation there is another point shown here which is situated at the lower elevation so if we look at the top and bottom of both the points on the photograph so what happens is again we have the smaller relief displacement for the point which is at a lower altitude higher which is at a higher altitude so this gives me another idea that the height of the terrain is related to the relief displacement so more is the height greater is the relief displacement now this is a photograph on the top aerial photograph on the top and the bottom is the topographical map we engineers are using in many projects topographical maps so in a topographical map the relief is shown by contours so all the contours which we can see and there is a dashed line so this dashed line is basically a linear line which is a pipeline on the ground so this has been drawn on a topographical map by dotted or pipeline is there and when you take the image of that area on the photograph because of the ups and downs in the area this pipeline is not actually laid over a flat ground there are areas which are up there are areas which are down and because of up and down area you will find on the aerial photograph that it is not a straight but it has become curved at several points it has become curved at several points whereas actually it is not on the ground this is happening because of the undulations which are present and the relief which is caused on the aerial photograph by the terrain height so if we compare how a feature would look like on the map topographical map which we are very frequently using in our projects and aerial photograph there's some basic differences we have to understand those because the aerial photograph is a perspective projection a central projection and that is why we are getting the relief displacement of the various objects which are situated away from the principal point whereas the map is based on orthogonal projection so in orthogonal projection we see only plan we don't see the top and bottom of the objects so in other words if we can convert the central projection into orthogonal projection system probably we can use aerial photographs as a map so we'll discuss that point later it is a real representation on the ground on the aerial photograph objects will be shown in their true shape size orientation whereas in the map it is a symbolical representation of the feature we know that the scale of the photograph is not uniform it varies from point to point but the scale of a map is throughout uniform the aerial photograph has geometrical distortion which is present which we are discussing today whereas the map is the geometrically correct representation of the earth we assume that it is error free a relief displacement is present 
and terrain relief is without distortion. Now, at times it becomes very, very difficult to read a photograph and identify the objects. In the previous slide, if I would not tell you that this is a pipeline, probably it was difficult for you to identify that this was a pipeline. But it becomes very, very easy because there are symbols, there are colors, there are notations to read those features. Aerial photography can be carried out for inaccessible and hazardous area very quickly, very easily, whereas uh, it is not possible in case of the mapping. So, there are basic differences between the map and aerial photograph and because of the differences, the photographs cannot replace the topographical maps. We have to remove all those distortion, we have to make the scale, understand the scale and then we can use it. So, the primary geometric distortion which is present in the vertical photograph is due to the relief, due to the height of that. Now, the objects which are directly below the nadar will have only their top visible. So, any object which is just below the camera axis will have only top visible, but the other objects now as you move away from the principal point, you will find the top of the object as well as the bottom of the object. If the objects are tall and far away from the center of the photo, the distortion and the positional error will be larger and larger. In the photograph, we can see a object, a taller object. So, this higher object which is present in the photograph, it could be a building, it could be a tower, it could be a hill, they will be displayed away from the principal point like in this diagram. So, they will be displayed outward from the principal point. Whereas, the points which are situated at the lower elevations, depressions, valleys, etcetera, it will be just reverse. So, they will be displayed inward toward the principal point. So, if we see whether the point is inward or outward displayed, we can find out that the point is situated at a higher altitude or point is situated on the valley point. In this particular photograph, you can see the Washington monument here and this is leaning outward. So, this is situated at a higher ground comparatively. This is another photograph where relief displacement is present and we can see for many buildings, we can see the top as well as the bottom of the image. So, this relief displacement helping us in two ways basically determine the height of the objects. We can determine what is the height of this particular building here because we can see the top and the bottom by taking certain measurements and also it can help us to recreate, to create the 3D view of the area are using a stereoscope. So, we can use some device and create a 3D model. Now, this is a aerial photograph shown here and there are chimneys, cooling towers. We can see four cooling towers. Now, the cooling tower has a shape, the bottom is bigger and then it becomes narrow at the top. You can see th in these four images, cooling tower images, that the cooling tower which is present in the center. Exactly you can see the top point as well as the bottom point, eccentric circles. But if you look at the other three points, you can see the top and bottom, they are not exactly coinciding in the center, but they are going little away, displayed little away from its true position. Whereas on the ground, this is geometrically correct figure. So, on the photograph, because of the height of this cooling tower, they appear to be displaced, top image and the bottom image. Whereas, at the center point, the relief is 0. We can see the bottom and the top. So, the 
cooling tower which are present towards the edge closer to the edge away from the principal point will have greater relief displacement as we can see from the black spot also that which is the topmost point. This is another interesting figure which shows that how the trees would look like, tall trees will look like. Although trees are mostly vertical, growing vertical, but if you take the image, you will find that except the center, tree at the center point, where you can see only the crown, other in the surrounding, other trees in the surrounding, you can see the bottom point as well as the top point, the bottom point and the top point. So, it looks like in the photograph they are lying actually on the ground, they are horizontal, no, but they are actually ground, it is vertical, it is the relief displacement which is giving me this kind of image. So, wherever we can see the top and bottom of the image, that particular distance is due to the relief and we have to find out how much is that particular distance when we are using these images. Let us derive a relationship for that. So, the diagram which is shown is O is our point exposure station from where the photograph has been taken. There is a tower here and this tower is A, A0 is the tower on the ground with a certain height. So, small h is the height of this tower and due to the height of the tower, we can see that on the photograph, I can see the bottom as well as the top. So, the top is A and its image is small a. It is capital A0, so image here is small a0. So, I can see measure this particular distance small a a0 distance on the photograph. So, if I could measure that distance, I can find out the relief, how much relief is present because of this h height. In this diagram, capital H is the flying height of the aircraft f is the focal length of the camera lens. So, if we draw a line which is actually perpendicular to the principal line from A, so I will get a point here. So, now we can use basically the property of the similar triangle. So, our objective here is if we could find out a A0 distance which is a relief displacement distance that is our objective. So, we are assuming certain things here, we are assuming that the distance of the top point on the photograph is from a principal point is a small r and r0 is the distance of the principal point of the bottom of the. So, this is r0. So, this we are just assuming that the top and bottom distance from the principal point are r and r0 and we can measure these distances using the parallax bar devices. We locate principal point of the photograph and we can see both the points, the top point, the bottom point and we can measure r and r0, we can measure that. Now, let us assume the r distance, r is from the uh, bottom of the tower to the ground nadar point that is r0. So, if we like to establish a relationship using the property of similar triangle. So, let us take two similar triangles O k a0 and O k0 a0. So, this is these are the two triangles here. This is one and this is another triangle. So, they are similar triangles now and we are using the property of the similar triangle. If I take the ratio here, R0 distance which is the horizontal distance now in this triangle here, 
अपॉन आर डिस्टेंस आर जीरो अपॉन आर इज इक्वल टू फोकल लेंथ डिवाइडेड बाई एच प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ द ट्राइंगल्स आई एम टेकिंग ईयर एंड फ्रॉम दिस रिलेशनशिप नाउ आई से आर जीरो इज एफ आर अपॉन एच सो आई नो आर जीरो हियर सो आई नो फोकल लेंथ आई नो कैपिटल एच वॉट इज अनोन इज कैपिटल आर इज अनोन सो फार सो दिस इज माई वन इक्वेशन नाउ now i will take another triangle so there is another triangle which is also similar triangle let us take two similar triangles o k small a and o k dash 0 a so these are the two similar triangles o k a and o k 0 dash and a i am using the same principle of similar triangle here i know this distance which is r r upon this is again r so r upon r is equal to focal length divided by h minus h because this particular distance is h minus h in this triangle so from this i get the value of r is equal to fr upon h minus h and we know that relief displacement which is a A zero is the relief displacement. So A A zero relief displacement will be R minus R zero. If I substitute the value of R from the previous relationship and R zero from this relationship, now I can determine the value of D. So if I calculate D now by substituting the values. i'll get the relief displacement d is equal to f r h capital h divided by capital h h minus h and we know what is r r is equal to h minus h upon f multiplied by small r from our earlier relationship so if i replace here r because this is not known to me i know f i know capital h i know small h but capital r is not known to me so i replace capital r with the value and when i am substituting it i can see that everything cancels out and what is left is d is equal to r small h upon capital h what is r as you can, if you remember r is the distance of the principal point distance of the top of the image from the principal point so this distance we can very easily measure using parallax scale so we can calculate relief displacement d with the help of this relationship because i know what is the height of the tower what is the height of the aircraft at the time of taking the images so this relationship gives me several clues and one is that relief displacement is directly proportional to the radial distance of the displayed image because here you will find that capital h is a constant quantity so what is changing is changing height of the object could change and r could change accordingly so i would say that relief displacement is proportional to the radial distance of the displayed image point and also it is directly proportional to the height of the object for which we are calculating the relief displacement now it is maximum at the edges as i told earlier also and it will be zero at the principal point because r is zero at the principal point so that is why if i substitute here r d becomes zero so objects which are situated at the edges of the photographs normally what we do is we avoid them for taking the measurements because more relief displacement is present on the objects which are present along the edges so we try to focus when we are taking the measurements from the vertical aerial photograph 
in the center only where the relief displacement is minimum distortion is minimum also this gives me this formula gives me an indication that a relief displacement is inversely proportional to the flying height if the flying height increases the relief displacement decreases so relief displacement will be actually small when you have a small scale photographs large when you have the large scale photographs so height determination uh, from the relief displacement can also be done the the other way round calculation can be done and this example is actually showing you how to calculate the height of any object on the ground so we have taken a tower here whose height is h which is to be determined and relief displacement uh, is given to us as 2.01 mm because this is a very very small quantity so normally the unit is in millimeter the radial distance from the top of the tower is 56.43 which is r and flying height is given so if we now substitute in the same relationship which we are using for relief displacement because here d is known capital h is known and r is known so by doing so we can calculate the height of the tower this is a relationship which will approximately give us the height of different objects which are present on the ground so using photogrammetric techniques we can not only determine what is the relief present but we can also determine the height of the different objects now once we know that relief is present then we have to remove it so that our measurements are much much accurate so relief displacement as we know that it is due to the height so we can actually uh, try to remove that geometric distortion try to rectify the photographs and create ortho photos so the ortho photos are to be created so that they can be used uh, like the maps and in order to create ortho photos we require normally digital elevation model points up or control points whose elevations are known to us so in order to remove that relief displacement we have to create the ortho photos let's understand what a ortho image is ortho image or ortho photo is a single aerial image in which distortion caused by the relief has been removed minimized the scale also becomes uniform like a map so there's no relief displacement present the uh, scale is becomes also uniform so now it is as good as the map ortho photos we have orthogonal projection and properties will be now similar to map and we can use for measurement purpose whether we want to measure the distance or we want to compute the area so like a planimetric correct map the ortho images are depicting you various objects which are present in the area so if we use ortho image now relief displacement will be removed you can see in this diagram how the ortho image will look like and how the aerial image so aerial image is based on the perspective view on the right you can see two towers one is a tall tower another is a smaller tower and their top and bottom image on the vertical aerial photograph which is based on the perspective projection the moment i convert that perspective projection into the orthographic view i can see the plan and the top and the bottom they are now merging together and i can look i can see them just like a map so it is a plan now so i can create a similar kind of a thing with the help of a procedure which is called the ortho rectification procedure this ortho rectification procedure basically uh, as you can see in this diagram also this is the image which has been taken from the ground 
and this is the orthogonal projection of the hut which is shown over the house, the plan. So now we, I do not have the relief present, I cannot see the bottom and the top and I cannot have that error which is present. So I have to convert that perspective projection into the orthographic projections where the rays are perpendicular from the ground, from the ground objects to the map or to the photographic platform, these are perpendicular, whereas in the perspective, they are converging at a single point. So here you can see there is a there is a photograph on the left and there is a photograph on the right. On the left is the vertical photograph and you can see the power line clearing, this is curved at this point, whereas actually on the ground, it is not curved. It is going into the depression now area and because it is going into the depression area because of the relief displacement which is present on the vertical photograph, it appears curved whereas it appears as a straight line now when the vertical photograph is converted into orthophoto. So, that is why it is uh, important that we convert our photographs into ortho images. There are various uses of ortho images, create 3D model, we can create very accurate measurements also now like a topographical map, we can determine the height of the objects on the ground, we can create a mosaic and ortho rectified images, uh, we have seen they are available on the Google Earth or Osim Planet or ArcMap or WMS, they are required. So, there is a term here mosaic, what is that? We uh, can use ortho images to create the mosaic. So, mosaic basically the assembly of two or more images to see the bird's eye view of the area, to see the large area at one glance and this is a requirement for many of our work. When we are working, maybe we are not working on a single image. So, we have to create a mosaic from ortho image because that becomes much much better accurate. So, normally there are two procedures, one is creating the uncontrolled mosaic. The name itself is suggesting that what you do is uh, on the basis of the overlap region you keep on joining. So, you do not require any ground control points. So, there is no control to check the accuracy when you are joining them together. So, uncontrolled mosaics are only good for viewing the area. You cannot take measurements on this because they are not accurate measurements. So, for viewing the area, they are good because they are joined together with the help of the overlap region. But the second category is the controlled mosaic and the name itself is now giving the meaning that we require certain control. So, we require ground control points, several ground control points so that the details could be matched. So, whatever is in the overlap region, we keep on matching those details and create the mosaic of the entire area. When the terrain is flat, the controlled mosaic can be as accurate as planimetric map. So, by developing the controlled mosaic, we can use it as a planimetric map. But if we create mosaic from the orthophotos, then very precise measurements can be carried out. This shows that it is the mosaic which has been created by orthophotos and we can now carry out very, very precise measurement whether it is the distance measurement or the area measurements on this particular mosaic. So, this is all I want to cover in this lecture. Thank you very much.